Lullaby for a Librarian, a comedy by Rex McGregor. The setting is a public library. Courtney is sorting books on a cart. Look at this garbage. Paranormal erotic romance. <laughs> Some people have like no taste. Well, what genre do you read? Paranormal erotic crime. Oh, oh, here comes Tara. Oh, I better, better make myself scarce. You're a funny sort of manager, Elaine. Hiding from your staff? Well, she's going through a rough patch, and I don't want her to think that I'm hounding her. Morning. No, I know I'm late, Courtney. <laughs> Go you. Did you, like, oversleep? In my dreams, if I had any. Still can't crash out? I'm tossing and turning. Sounds like a nightmare. I should be so lucky. How come you're late? A damn breakdown. Vehicle or mental? Feels like both. Did you send Elaine a text? Couldn't. Flat battery. Car or phone? Both. The universe has it in for me today. Elaine will understand. Uh, that's what I'm afraid of. I can't bear her pity. Insomniacs can get like way paranoid. I need to get some sleep. Oh, I'll ask Lucy to roster me on the reference desk. It's always dead between 10 and 11. Lucy's off sick. Elaine's put you on story time at 1030. She would. You always love doing it, Tar. That's beside the point. There's no way I can grab a nap with a bunch of toddlers swarming all over me. If only I could catch a few winks. Uh-oh. Mega yawn alert. Oh, Myrtle, that's just what I need. Laters. Oh, hang on, Myrtle, that's just what I need. Please keep that stroller out of the aisle, dear. Parallel with the others. We can't help the different sizes, but we can at least have the handles all lined up in a nice straight row. We'll accept a degree of inconsistency with the wheels. Thank you. Myrtle, it's been ages since we had a chat. What exciting things are happening in the world of cataloging? I don't expect sarcasm from you, Tara. No, honestly, I swear on AACR2's grave. Right now, there's nothing on earth I'd sooner hear about than the latest developments and resource description. Oh, well, since you bring it up here, personally, I think RDA is the thin end of an insidious wedge. As if standards aren't declining fast enough. Call me a traditionalist, but there was a simple elegance in the rule of three that no unwieldy list of added entries can ever hope to emulate. And these days, when we get a compilation without a collective title, instead of objectively transcribing what's on the item, we're encouraged to devise our own two, four, five. Make one up like a fiction author and boast about our creative contribution in a 500. For came of professional humility. Please carry on. I'm not boring you. No, no, I'm just closing my eyes to express my commiseration. Dreadful, isn't it? And what does patronizingly spelling out every single abbreviation achieve? Apart from dumbing down bib records and aggravating my RSI. And don't get me started on the callous abandonment of GMDs. Do go on, almost there. Almost where? The climax of your heart-trending tale of woe. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Tara, I'm in mourning for square brackets. Sir. <clears throat> One. Myrtle, don't go! Sorry to wake you, sir. You were, like, snoring. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Don't feel bad. Happens all the time. Not all the time, unfortunately. Well, I don't know what came over me. Sleep is natural, involuntary response. You don't have to justify it. I respect your regulations. I'll go quickly. Yeah, don't be silly. We never evict anyone for a first infringement. 
Oh, you're most kind, but... Please sit down, sir, and finish your snooze. I don't want to disturb anyone. I'm afraid I must insist. You've been blessed with the ability to doze off. I can't possibly allow this precious gift to go to waste. Shall I, like, fetch a blanket? No, thank you, Courtney. We'll use my jacket. But, Here uh, you go, sir. Let me tuck you in. But I... Abra, what are you doing? Helping a patron. Alfred, are you all right? You know this gentleman? Uh, isn't he one of our regulars? Uh, no. Well, I'm fine, Elaine. Uh, don't make a fuss. What's going on? OMG, there's a phone hidden in this book, in his book, and it's recording. What? I'm studying privacy law. I recognize covert surveillance when I see it. Oh, it's nothing sinister. Alfred's from the ALA. The Association of Legal Administrators? You can't pin anything on us, bud. Spying is like unethical, inadmissible, and just plain sneaky. Well, I'm from the Library Association. Elaine, explain. Oh, he's been assessing you. I recommended you for a senior regional management role. Me? Alfred, I'm sure you'll agree. Her patron-centric focus is impeccable. Exceeded expectations. I'm happy to confirm the appointment. Congratulations, Tara. Mm, hold on. What if I don't want the position? I know it'll be long hours. I know it'll be a change of pace. Instead of rushing around after everyone, you'll spend long hours in dull meetings listening to soporific reports. I don't know how you'll keep awake. Go for it, Tar. When do I start? Well, in 45 minutes, I've booked you for the three-hour webinar on long-term sustainability of public libraries as recreational community spaces. Oh, I can't wait. Well, that's a relief. I'm glad you've been promoted over my head. You're so super efficient. I was terrified you'd take my job. I can squeeze in last story time before I leave. Read the one about the luckiest person in the world. Who? Rip Van Winkle. He slept for 20 years. He was an amateur. I bet I can break that record. That was cute. <laughs> It's very cute play. Yeah, Rex. Very good. <laughs>
we're so close to the stage. Yeah, this is a great table. We're so close to the stage. Is that, is that the waiter? He isn't wearing a shirt. How can that be sanitary to serve food not wearing a shirt? Uh, waiter, I'll have a Diet Coke, please, with a slice of lemon. Uh, a waiter, honey, I'll have a double martini with extra olives. Isn't he just the cutest thing? Don't worry, Sherry, look. He's wearing gloves. Oh my God, the show's starting. Look at those guys dance. I don't think they're wearing any. Yeah, they're, 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 you're right. They're, they're not wearing any. Oh my gosh. One of them is coming over here. What the, okay. Oh, he's climbing up on our table. Why is he climbing up on our table? Sir, excuse me, sir. You're um you're 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 gonna knock over the candle. Go away. Go away, sir. Myra, what does he want? What does he want? It's part of the dance routine, silly. He dances for you, and you give him money. What? I, I give him what? Money. You give him money. You're supposed to stuff some down his pants and, oh, oh, hand me my purse. Thank you. I know I've got some bills in here somewhere. Uh, oh, here we go. Look, we do it like this. You hold out the bills. Come here, pretty boy. Look what our mama has for you. Myra, what are you doing? I don't believe it. You're actually putting money down his pants. I can't look. Oh my gosh. Another one is coming over. If my Arnie knew where I was, I can't look. Oh, calm down, Sherry. They're just dancing. You're right. You're right. I'm calm. I'm just not looking. I, I'm drinking my Coke and I'm not looking. I'm, I'm drinking my Coke and I'm not looking. Gary, I'm stop. not looking. Stop. stop covering your eyes. Look, they're gone. They're dancing on the table across the room. Oh, look at that chorus line of gorgeous guys. You know, there's something about a guy with a bare chest and tight black pants. I'm gonna go out tomorrow and I'm gonna buy my David a pair. Yeah, uh, well, he'll never wear them, but but they, hey, wait a minute. Look at that guy on the left side. Well, he looks familiar. I don't wanna look. You probably saw him the last time you were here. No, no, not from here, from somewhere else. But, I think he's, oh, wait. Hey, before I tell you, I want you to check him out. Maybe I'm wrong, Sherry. Just look at him, okay? Stop covering your eyes and just look at him. See the blonde guy at the end of the line, the one who's doing all those sexy motions with his hips. They're all doing sexy motions. Okay, okay, I'll look. I'll look in a minute. I'll just take a deep breath and one, two, three. Okay, I'm looking. Which one? The, the, the blonde, the one on the end of the line. Does, doesn't he look exactly like? The blonde guy on the end? Oh, oh, oh my. It's Mr. Bobby. It's the kindergarten teacher. Our kid's kindergarten teacher. Oh, that's what I thought. Well, it looks exactly like him, but but how could that be? I mean, maybe maybe we're wrong. Maybe 
maybe it's not him. Maybe it just looks like him or it's his younger brother or. or... Oh, 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 no, it's, it's him. All right. It's Mr. Nelson. Our kids have a stripper pervert stripper for a kindergarten teacher. We have to report this. We have to tell someone who, who should we tell? Uh, the principal, the PTA, the school board. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Uh, <clears throat> well, I, I guess we really should report him, but, but I think it's kind of funny. I mean, he's kind of cute. Look at him. I mean, he's, he's gorgeous. What a body. I'm gonna get him to come over here. Yoo-hoo! Blondie, on the end of the line. Yes, yes, that's right, you. Yes, I'm pointing to you. Come on over, say hello. Hey there. Ah, oh, it's, uh, it's my lucky night tonight. Wow, so are you ladies uh, calling me? What can I do for you, ladies? Oh, come on, ladies. Do you want a little bit of a lap dance? Do you want me to dance with you? Come on, don't be shy. Ah, oh, I like threesomes. Come on, ladies. Let's get up and dance on the table. You. Give me your right hand, Miss Lovely, and you, Miss Sexy, give me your left hand and we'll uh, dance on- You pervert, let go of my hand this minute. I've never been so shocked. Aw, are you a little shy, honey? Don't be scared, Mr. Bobby will be gentle. Hey, I'm just asking for a little dance. Well, <clears throat> I'll dance with you, Mr. Bobby. Oh, baby, you are some. Hot kindergarten teacher. Kindergarten teacher? What are you talking about? Come on, sexy lady, let's talk. And a little more dancing. Mr. Bobby loves to dance. Myra, stop dancing with him. I want to ask him a question. Do the names Jeremy Kramer and Betsy Keller sound familiar? I'll give you a hint. They're in kindergarten and you're their teacher. You're their kindergarten teacher and we're going to report you. Kindergarten teacher? That's crazy. I'm Mr. Bobby. Listen, I think you ladies have had a little too much to drink. I mean, you're just imagining things. I'm going to leave and then I'm going to call over one of the other guys and they'll come over to dance with you. Oh, no, you don't. We know who you are, and like I said, we're going to report you to, who are we going to report him to, Myra? Uh, well, let's see. Um, well, there's there's the teachers' union and uh, the, the, the PTA, <laughs> school board, the newspapers. Mm -hmm. I can see the headlines. Mr. Bobby, kindergarten teacher by day, stripper by night. Oh, ooh, it's a great human interest story. Ladies, for the last time, you're mistaking me for someone else. It's not nice to lie, Mr. Bobby. We're going to report you. Wait. Wait, Sherry. Maybe. Maybe he has a good reason for being a stripper. Come on, Mr. Bobby. Admit it and... Tell me why you're a stripper. Okay, okay, okay. So listen, my boss is watching. So you're going to have to dance with me while I'm talking. And, and by the way, just for the record, I'm not a stripper. I'm an exotic dancer. So, so let's see here. It, it's my wife. She's, a, she's in medical school. Your wife? You have a wife? Yeah, I have a wife. She's in medical school and the bills are humongous. And you know, teachers don't get paid very much. So I took this job dancing. I never thought anyone from school would come to a place like this. And hey, wait a minute. What are you two ladies doing here? Aren't you the 
you're the vice president of the PTA, Mrs. Kramer. And, and, and you, Mrs. Heller, you're, you're the room mom, my room mother. Maybe I should report you guys. No, you're wrong. I, I'm not Mrs. Kramer and I'm not the vice president of the PTA. And, and I guess I'm not Mrs. Heller and I'm, I'm not a room mother. That's funny. I could have swore that I recognized the both of you. So let's see, I wonder who would be interested in hearing how two respected leaders in the community spend their nights. Well, um, wait a minute, Mr. Bobby, you know, um, well, it, it's very true that sometimes people look like other people, but they're not those people at all. They just look like them, but, you know, now that I look at you, Mr. Bobby, you don't look like a a, a bit like our kids' kindergarten teacher. Uh, not a bit. Really? Are you sure? Well, you know what? Now that I look at both of you, maybe maybe you are not the vice president of the PTA. And or the room mother. Well. Yeah, that too. It's true. But you know what, lady? It's been fun. And uh, I'm going to get back to my job now because I've got a job to do. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Turn around and, and let me just put these bills in your pockets. Oh, now go on. Those ladies at the table at the back. They look like they need a little attention. Sherry, why are you grabbing my arm? What is the matter? Myra, look who's at the table across the room. It's Doris Finkel, the president of the Homeowners Association. Oh, I see her. And look who she's with. Paula Abrams, the rabbi's wife. Oh, yoo-hoo, ladies. Enjoying the show? Myra, stop. They'll, they'll tell everyone they saw us here. Oh, relax. They're regulars. I see them every week. Listen, don't worry. If they tell everyone we're here, we'll just tell everyone they were here. Oh, you're right. You're right. If they tell, we'll tell. Waiter, bring me another Diet Coke. No, no. Bring the whole bottle. And Myra... Give me some of those dollar bills and get one of those guys over here. I feel like dancing. <laughs> Nicely done. Strip tease black belt. I love it. That's hilarious. <laughs> The Root of All Evil, Frederick Devereux, fourth excerpt from a play written by Tasman Gerhard, 1970s, England. The Decks, the most prestigious and glamorous event of the Devereux calendar. The Devereux mansion has been polished from top to bottom. The grand and magnificent ballroom boasts breathtaking adornments. Spotlight center on the dance floor. As Benjamin stands alone drinking some tropical punch, he is approached by a beautiful young lady, Estonia Darvell. She is a guest at the party. You must be Benjamin Devro. Yes. Well, I'm Estonia Darvell. Estonia, as in the country? I was conceived in Estonia. Oh. How tragic. Aren't you enjoying this wonderfully lavish party? I think it's absolutely sublime. The event means very little to me. Uh, 
I never enjoined, but father insists that we all attend. Oh. You look very smart, by the way. Mm. Aren't we done talking? Kindly move along. Thank you. Ouch. I'm only trying to be nice. Me too. Well, I'm the head founder and head honcho of my media company called Browbeat. Have you heard of it? I don't care. Excuse me. Thomas Devereux appears carrying two glasses of champagne, one in each one. Bloody awful crowd. All they talk about is money. I wish they'd all shut up and go home. Ben, aren't you going to introduce me? Uh, this is Estonia Darvel. Estonia, this is... Uh... It's Thomas Devereux, your brother. Yes, I know. Hmm. I would say you seem a little shallow and perhaps arrogant, young lady. I beg your pardon. I ignore him. It's, it's the drink talking. I'm not drunk. The ambiance in here could make anyone feel the same way. Thomas, don't have any more champagne, please. Stop telling me what to do. So, do you want to dance? No, thank you. Oh. Come on, Estonia. Let's see if you have any good moves. I have no intention of liking you. I'm already spoken for. My name is Josie. She's prettier than you. Plus, father seems to be watching me intently, so I... I need to keep myself occupied. Uh, this is outrageous. How dare you? Let go of me. My manners will surface eventually. Just give it time. Now, let's boogie. Benjamin, help me, please. Uh, he really means no harm. Just relax and enjoy. Off you go. As Thomas whisks her off, one of the guests approaches Benjamin. Frank Malloy is of a great stature and has a forceful demeanor. He grabs Ben's hand and shakes it vigorous. Benjamin Devereaux, Frank Malloy, I've heard the marvelous news. You must be delighted. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, don't be so modest. Your father has told me everything. You certainly have a lot to look forward to. You must be excited. Uh, what did he tell you? She's the most eligible businesswoman right now, and she's very beautiful. You're a lucky man. I, I, I'm sorry, but what are you talking about? Oh, goodness me. I hadn't realized you've such a great sense of humor. It's all under wraps. I get it now. The wedding is going to be divine. What wedding? Mustache, your father's calling for me. Frank walks off as Stonia returns. What? <laughs> is your brother receiving medical assistance? Why was he talking about a wedding? I mean, why does he have to be so pushy? And goodness me, your brother does have some serious breath issues. And why did he call me a lucky man? I can't believe that Thomas is a member of the Devereux family. How incredibly embarrassing for you. Oh, they must be up to something again. I'm sick of these games. <laughs> you poor little love. Nobody ever said that to me except Michelle. Mm. Well, I heard that Michelle was caught up in the most unfortunate circumstances. As you can imagine, the news of her supposedly accidental death has totally destroyed my dream of living a happy and honest life. I miss her so much. Well, once the dust settles and time begins to heal the ugliness of the past, you will eventually smell the splendid scent of that happiness again. Cryptic talk is a form of harassment. Could you please get to the bloody point? Fine. Do you like me? You scare me, quite frankly. Oh, I'm sure that means that you like me. I've just experienced a dreadful and heartbreaking loss. I have no intention of pursuing another relationship. You still don't get it, do you? Get what? Huh? I, I, I loathe all this suspense. Now please tell me who the hell is getting married. It's us, silly. I'm going to be your beautiful new bride and I'm over the moon. I, uh, I, uh, I, I feel 
I feel nauseous. Oh, I, I think you need some fresh air. It's a bit stuffy in here. Uh, let me take you outside. Oh, j just leave me alone. Father's going to pay for this. Estonia tries to put her arm around Benjamin, but he ignores her and exits. Scene 21. Benjamin and Penelope, his older half-sister, spot Auntie Sophie pacing up and down the hallway close to Frederick's study. Sophie is a little startled on seeing that. What are you doing here, Aunt Sophie? Oh, Aunt Sophie, I can't quite hear you. Are you feeling all right? I, I needed some, some air. Hmm. The crowd was getting too much for me. Oh, Aunt Sophie, father has driven Daniel away with his horrid threats again. Look at this note. Oh, my goodness me. He's used some very strong language indeed. Mm. But, but I love Daniel. I mean, even though he did leave me for some other woman across the pond, he said he deeply regretted it and, and I believe him. I mean, what's so wrong in giving him a second chance? I know, we should all believe in second chances. If only I could stop these threats. Once and for all. I need to speak to Father urgently. He was looking at me with a suspicious eye earlier before that Frank Malloy joined me. Father's well and truly crossed the line now. He needs to stop meddling with my future. I won't stand for it. Isn't, isn't Father supposed to be on stage right now? I mean, so why is he still in the study? I, I don't understand. Let's see what he's got to say for himself. No, you, you can't go in there. You can't. Why not? Uh, Frederick has told me not to disturb him. He, he told me to wait outside uh, as he's busy with an unexpected guest. Given the level of security surrounding the decks, why do we have an unexpected guest? Hmm? Doesn't make any sense. Who's he talking to then? I, I think he's talking to... Uh, to... Look! There's some red ribbon sticking out from underneath the study door. Please don't touch that. You seem awfully jumpy, Aunt Sophie. Are you all right? Ben, Penny, get me out of here. I'm in the room next door. Father's just left me to rot. Is that you, Thomas? Oh, you poor thing. Why are you in that room? Oh, Thomas. My dear boy, what happened? He said my appalling behavior was embarrassing him. He's bruised my face and hurt my right arm. After that, he stormed out of this room and locked the door. D do we know where the spare key is? You have to hurry. I need to pee as well. I think I've had too much to drink. What if we were to break down the door? Thomas, please be patient. I'll, I'll see if one of the maids can help. Sophie exits. He yelled at me so much that I couldn't get a word in edgeways. He said he's going to send me off to a mental institution so that I can breathe my last breath in there. Mummy would never contemplate such a thing. She'd be absolutely horrified if she knew about this. And Mummy would have liked Daniel too. She would have welcomed him back with open arms. When I last visited her at the cemetery, she told me this year was going to be a special year. But something might happen too. Oh, look, the, the, the red ribbons disappeared. Someone must have pulled it through from the other side. I, I wonder who did that. It's odd that father is missing from all of the speeches. He never misses a minute of the text. This is most unusual. He's beginning to worry me. Thomas. Hold on for a bit. We're going to check on father first. I... The door's locked. Father, can you hear me? Can you open the door, please? Are you all right? Oh, panic over. I don't need to go now. Oh, Thomas. I... Father, can you hear us? 
I'm going to break the door down. Ready? One, two, three. Oh my God. Why is father lying on the floor like that? Why is he bleeding so much? Father, father, can you hear me? Say something. I can't feel a pulse. He's not breathing. Oh, he's been viciously stabbed. Oh, God. Why is the back door open? I I locked the door when I came in after talking to Daniel. Oh, or did I? I can't remember. I cannot believe this. Who would do such a thing? I, I still can't find a pulse. Oh, my God. I'm responsible for my father's death. I left the now, now, Penny, this is not your fault at all. Anybody could have forgotten to lock that back door. It could have been Father himself. I'm going to call the police. That's strange. There's no dialing tone. How are we going to call the police then? Sophie enters the study. I think I found the spare key. It was... Oh my, that's... There's a lot of blood on the carpet. Oh, Frederick. Oh, Frederick. I, I wonder who was in here with that ribbon. I mean, what does it even mean? And Sophie, do you know anything about that red ribbon? Ben, Penny, where are you? Please let me out. I need to change. It really stinks in here. What's going on with father? Don't tell me. Don't tell me my dream came true. Well, he's dead, isn't he? My father is dead. Frederick Charles Devereux, if you are listening to me now, then here is what I have to say to you. You will see no tears from my depressing eyes. You will never see me experience any grief-stricken heartache due to your demise. You treated me like a worthless piece of rubbish. You had no respect for me and you loathed the sight of me tried so hard to love you, but I couldn't. I've hated you for a very long time. Don't you dare approach my kind, caring and loving mother. You hear me? You will leave my mother alone. You took her away from me when you pushed her down those stairs. I love her more than anyone else in this mansion, and I worship her. If only I was dead as well, I could have protected her from you. Anyway, I guess it's farewell, Father. May you rest in pain forever. Wow. Great. Great. Can't wait for the last one. <laughs> we'll we'll be thinking about who done it in the conversation. <laughs> that was great. Wow. Jeannie walks around the bend of the escarpment to find the slot. Canyon has ended. The land is a huge plain filled with large, hard-packed mud shapes, human-sized 
are bigger. They resembled giant mushrooms or other sculptural beings. One looks like a resting camel. Genie goes over and lays down in the camel's shadowed side. I'm so hot. Now that my water's gone, I just go to sleep and that will be that. Jean closes her it eyes. It's so bad to die that way. Jeannie closes her eyes and feels something on her body. What is that? It feels like thorns. She opens her eyes and observes a butterfly licking the sweat off her arm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you need salt, too. That's something wonderful to see on my way out. Jeannie discovers with a startle that she's leaning against the body of an actual camel. Hmm. This is Ella, an international gender fluid creator. Hello there. How are you thirsty? Uh, yeah, but... Uh... I know I am. And I know where there is a watering hole right around the van. Let's go. No, I'm okay. You know, it never used to get quite this hot. Come on. No, I'm going to stay here. Please, um, feel free to go on without me. What? Me travel alone? Oh, why not? I was alone. The water there is crystal clear and is so cool over the shade. Oh. Water does seem to be scarce around here. Why? You're really rude. No doubt there's your way of addressing the condition of my hump. What? You know, we can design our humps by shifting the water around inside. We create our own designs using our own flesh. My thing has already stayed right now because of the drought. Oh? Yes. We push a little water over here and some over there. It's a little like a landscaping except with the fur instead of the grass. Most people don't notice, but we do. In fact, there's so pride and joy are started amongst each other. Jeannie becomes very engaged by this information. And if I get some water, I will do a demonstration. We just have to go around the van. So you'll show me if you get some water? I think I'd like to see that. Jeannie stands up and dusts herself off. The proceed towards the spring. You know, it doesn't last forever. Not the way a painting or a famous book does, but it's what we can do. Jeannie lightens up. And after we finish designing our configurations, we stand against a particular spot that will complement it. You know, it has to do with sensing the environment. The water is over there. They head towards a rocky escarpment. Oh, 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 by the way, by the way, we have introduced ourselves. Amela. And I'm Jeannie. You simply won't believe it. Wait, please. They reach the spring. They see the mermaid's face hovering over it. Oh, discovery. Thanks to you, Ella. Mermaid winks at Ella and disappears. Have some, please. It is so delicious. No, I'm not thirsty. I showed you where it is, and it's very difficult for me to move. No, but thank you anyway. <laughs> well, 
You said you were going to drink and demonstrate your art for me. Oh, who cares if you die? An exactly. uncomfortable silence comes between them. But the camel doesn't forget their mission to seduce Jeannie into drinking. Jeannie, do you remember the pedigree pencils? Okay. They were they were a turquoise color with black at the bottom. Well, I can twist my fur, the color section on the right, so that it captures the same blue color. How does she know about pedigree pencils? It has not to be sooner than 5 p.m. in October because then it reflects the sky color. Obviously, it wouldn't be last past six. But it's really beautiful. I could hardly see it myself because my neck twists around only so far. So I have to kick it to see it. Ella demonstrates by thirsting out her left leg, like a dance number. You see, Paul, tell me that to me. She sits right there on my flank. She was a beautiful woman. Most people don't think that because she was a comedian, but she was. Oh, don't look so surprised. We know all the movie stars. And over here on my right shoulder, it's Ava Gardner. And the other day, see, I discovered John Crawford in my right hip. And like when she did that. Ella thirsts out her right hip like a Congo dance. Or like this. Ella stretches her long neck out and spreads her limbs <laughs> out like an X. Ella. <laughs> Souls. Oh, we know everything about your humans. Yes, we have to. Because you own us and can move us around at will and sell us of, you know, and we have no say in that. I know. Ownership. Yes. It must have been a glorious time when we roamed the desert free. We could find the water holes instead of being tied up and sealed the wrong way. So some humans are so stupid. You do know what I mean. <laughs> yes, I agree with you. <laughs> oh, you know, <laughs> you know, I like you. Yes, I like you don't seem to be the person at all. I can talk to you. The camel catches her faux pas and becomes more restrained. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> okay, I'll try some. <laughs> This water does taste exceptional. Like, I kind of like some kind of flowers, roses maybe? You know, I am so happy just to adorn myself every day, picking and choosing. That makes me feel beautiful. Not like an old piece of dirt, you know? Yeah, it's your art form. Yes. You and I share that our artist, artistic practice. No, no, Ella, it, you and your creations have a place. That's not the same for me. My work has no place. I have no place. Oh, what do you mean? You walk the earth too. My work has no place. I have no place. It's paramount to channel negativity into some form of creativity, don't you think? <laughs> Imagination sets us apart. You focus on something, 
Fedora is fine and it works. That's what art is all about. Don't you agree? I, I, so, why are you here? What are you about? Well, basically, my family's gone and I've had it. <laughs> I came here to get away and see something beautiful. But then I got lost. Now I'm missing out on seeing anything. I'm so angry. Oh, I'm sorry. But you know, just forget it. I mean, what are we going to do? It's all just life. Oh, my. Listen, honey, okay? You don't need anybody. I mean, look at me. Look to your art. I don't know what to do anymore. Look to the earth. There's always something surprisingly beautiful that will put you up. Like flowers to crack pavements. Even if Tom, he was my husband, even if he was still here. And the earth sends you message. But you have to look. I'm tired of all the game and the charades. I'm starting to th think. It's getting hard for me to move. All this dust seems to be weighing me down. Ella starts to fade. Oh, no! Look to the end. There is guidance there. Please don't go. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm such a basket case. Ella fades to dirt. I... I don't understand it at all, but I'm still okay. I'm still up. <laughs> I'm breaking it. Oh, she's gone now. She was fun. Except I've done all that before. Nothing new. What the? There's no value to it anyway. Fade to black. Wow, oh, that was touching. Okay, we have a we have another scene. It's the scene right after this one. <laughs> you were all great. Thank you so much. Very great. Yeah. Okay, so we'll we'll go into the next scene now. Whenever you're ready, Mike. Jeannie crosses through many different areas of the desert. Long shadows from her body extend out over the landscape. The sound of thunder is heard, and the wind kicks up. The Amanda Puss is heard, but not seen. I wish I could get rid of this feeling. Why did I drink that water back there? The joy of animals only goes so far. Take a deeper dive. Talk to me. Very slowly, the American Amanda Puss appears in Jeannie's shadow. Her outfit is white with large, blurry, multicolored polka dots. She separates herself away from Jeannie's shadow. Their faces mirror each other. I still have the same problems. I am a widow now. Indulging emotions. Is that the question? They haunt oh. me. Tom, Mom, Dad. I'll never see them again. 
A hole full of water can drown a puddled heart. Water, blood, blood in the sand. What's the difference? Like the direction of the wind, water changes. To begin, in the beginning, there was liquid tears. Too much and liquid tears turns to deadly ice. And once water is inside the atmosphere, it expands ever more. You are not the water. You are not the torrent. You are not in the trap of the abyss. You are not the puddle. Jeannie ignores this information and starts to engage with her in a somewhat like dance form. Please, can you tell me, will my longing and aloneness never stop? Her black net cloud starts to spread out and surround her. Reimagine walking away. Envision letting go. Say goodbye. No, I can't. I'm too exhausted to think. Visualize a new story, or is there no new story for you? I'm too tired to imagine. What? No imagination? No new invention? I guess I really should choose to stay or go. Is that the question? The question to ask? Who are you? I wish I knew. A puma face appear merged in a double image with the amandapus. Now then, now and then, who is the mother of invention? Mother, oh mother, where art thou? Now then, now and then, who is the mother of invention? Too old to be a mother. Mother, oh mother. Where art thou? Mother, oh mother, where art thou? Mother, oh mother, where art thou? Ethan is to die here. Mother, oh mother, where art thou? Desire, want, mother. longing. I could be happy just to die here. <laughs> oh mother. Be happy. <laughs> mother. Oh mother. Where are thou? I'm tired of hanging on with my claws. Oh mother. Mom, Dad, Jill and Where Josh. Mother. Oh mother. Where are thou? Mother. Oh Stop my that. God! <laughs> Where are thou, mother? Oh, mother! All I wanted was to come out here and see something beautiful mother. to rebalance myself. Mother. People and their stupid selves. I was thwarted from that, mother. Mithy, the oh, world, mother. Stupid rock. Why couldn't I jump? See me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. If only I knew the truth. See me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. Is there something bigger out there? Me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. Perceive me. See me. It starts to rain. The Amandapus and Puma disappear. 
very good. Hmm. That was great. I, I did. Uh, I did. There's going to be a lot of conversation at the end of the Uh, Duke is driving on the highway from Barstow to Vegas, and Gonzo is in the passenger seat. We were somewhere around Barstow, on the edge of the desert, when the drugs began to take hold. I remember saying something like, I feel a bit lightheaded. Maybe you should drive. Hmm? Suddenly, there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car, and a voice was screaming. Holy Jesus, what are these goddamn animals? Did you say something? Never mind. It's your turn to drive. No point in mentioning these bats, I thought. The poor bastard will see them soon enough. <sighs> Fucking pig. Why? We had two bags of grass, pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker half full of cocaine, a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, also a quart of tequila, a quart of rum, a case of beer, a pint of raw ether, and two dozen animals. Not that we needed all that for the trip, but once you get locked into a serious drug collection, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. The only thing that really worried me was the ether. There is nothing in this world more helpless and irresponsible and depraved than a man in the depths of an ether binge. And I knew we'd get into that rotten stuff pretty soon. One took over the line, sitting downtown at a railway station. One took over the line. One toke, you poor fool. Wait till you see these goddamn bats, man. Sweet, sweet Mary. Let's give that boy a lift. No! No, we can't stop here. This is bat country! Hot <sighs> damn! I never rode in a convertible before. <laughs> is that right? Well, I guess you're about ready then, aren't you? We're your friends. We're not like the others, man. Really. No more of that talk or I'll put the leeches on you. Do you understand? <laughs> How long could we maintain, I wondered? How long before one of us starts raving and jabbering at this boy? What will he think then? This same lonely desert was, last, was the last known home of the Manson family. Will he make that grim connection when my attorney starts screaming about bats and huge manta rays coming down on the car? If so, well, we'll just have to cut his head off and bury him somewhere, because it goes without saying that we can't turn him loose. He'd report us at once to some kind of outback kind of Nazi, Nazi law enforcement, law enforcement agency, agency, and they'll, and they'll run, run us down like dogs. like dogs. Jesus, did I just say that or just did think I it? Say that? Was I talking? D did they hear me? It's okay. Just admiring the shape of your skull. No, thanks. I have asthma. Maybe I'd better have a chat with this boy. Perhaps if I explain things, he'll rest easy. All right, listen. There's one thing you should probably understand. Can you hear me? Good. I want you to have all the background. Now, this is a very ominous assignment with overtones of extreme personal danger. I'm a doctor of journalism, man. <laughs> this is important, goddammit. This is a goddamn fucking true story. You fucking, get your hands off me. Get your hands off my fucking head. No, 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 no. Our vibrations were getting nasty, but why? Was there no communication in this car? Had we deteriorated to the level of dumb beasts? 
This man at the wheel was my attorney. Now, he's not such a, some dingbat I found on the strip, man. He's a foreigner. That doesn't matter, though, to you, does it? Are you prejudiced? No, no. I didn't think so. Because if in spite of all that, this man is extremely valuable to me. Oh, shit. I forgot about the beer. Do you want some? Beer? No. How about some ether? What? Never mind. Okay. Let's get right to the heart of this thing. 24 hours ago, we were sitting in the Pogo Lounge at the Beverly Hills Hotel, the patio section, of course, drinking Singapore slings with mezcal on the side, hiding from the brutish realities of this foul year of our Lord, 1971. Tell him what you said, man. I said, you're going to need plenty of legal advice before this thing is over. As your attorney, I advise you to rent a fast car with no top, and you'll need the cocaine. Tape recorder for special music. Acapulco shirts. Get the hell out of L.A. for at least 48 hours. We're going to have to arm ourselves to the teeth. And why not? I mean, if a thing's worth doing, it's worth doing right. Shit, we'd be fools not to ride this strange torpedo all the way out to the end. Son, we're going to the Mint Hotel for the richest off-road race for motorcycles and dune buggies in the history of organized sport. It's a fantastic spectacle, and I'm going to cover it. Pure gonzo journalism. Ah! Oh, you people are all the same. You have no faith in the essential decency of the white man's culture. Our trip is different. It's to be a classic affirmation of everything right and true in the national character. A gross physical salute to the fantastic possibilities of life in this country. But only for those with true grit. And we are chock full of that, man! Damn right. My attorney understands this concept, but do you? He said he understood, but I could see it in his eyes that he didn't. He, he was, was lying, lying to me. To me. Oh! Ah! Oh! Madison! What? Madison! Oh, oh, oh yeah, 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 Madison. Right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, this man has a bad heart, angina pectoris, but we have a cure for it. Here you go. Here, big whiff, big whiff, sonny boy. Ah, oh, much better. Uh, now for the doctor. Me? Uh, oh. what, what, the, what the fuck are we doing out here in the middle of the desert? Somebody call the police. We need help. We need help. We need help. <laughs> <laughs> the truth. Uh, truth? We're going to Vegas. Vegas. The crocus skag baron named Savage Henry. It's true. Why? Because we've known him for years. But he ripped us off. And you know what that means. And you know what that means. No. <laughs> Savage Henry, he has cashed his check. Cashed his check. And we're going to rip his lungs out. And eat them. That bastard won't get away with this. I mean, what is going on in this country? What a scum sucker like that can get away with sandbagging and doctor of journalism. Will you tell me that? <laughs> Hey! Hey! Th 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 <laughs> thanks for the ride! Don't worry about me! I, I like you guys! Hey! Come back! <laughs> come back and have a beer! <sighs> Shit. Fuck him. I'm gonna miss him. <laughs> Did you see his eyes? We have to get out of here. Get out of California before that kid finds a cop. Scoot over, you fat bastard. We had a real freak on our hands. Oh, shit. It was absolutely imperative that we get to the Mint Hotel before the deadline for press registration. Otherwise, we might have to pay for our suite. Jesus. Jesus, did you see what God did to us, man? God didn't do that. You did it. 
You're a fuck. You're a narcotics agent. I knew it. That was our cocaine, you fucking pig, swine, whore. You better be careful. Plenty of vultures out here that'll pick your bones clean before the sun comes up. You fucking whore. <laughs> Here's your half of the sunshine acid. Eat it. Yeah. All right. How long have I got? As your attorney, I advise you to drive at top speed. Or it'll be a goddamn miracle if we can get there before you turn into a wild animal. Oh, you pig fucker! <laughs> you ready for that? Checking into a Vegas hotel under a phony name with intent to commit capital fraud on a head full of acid? I sure hope so. <laughs> 30 minutes. It was going to be very close. Yay. <laughs> You have great chemistry, and Mary, I really enjoyed seeing you scream it during an acid trip. Please don't take it <laughs> no, the wrong way. No. I was just really, it's not something I would associate with you, so it was a real no. treat to see you be so different. Thank you. <laughs> so everybody who can stick around, what we do next is just a little conversation. Okay. Uh, so everybody can open their videos, open their mics. And the first piece that we had was Rex McGregor's Lullaby for a Librarian. Rex, was that a new piece? No, it's actually, uh, it was written quite a few years ago, um, well, pre-COVID. And uh, yeah, the prompt was to write a play set in a public library. I'm so glad to see people use work that maybe they didn't just write yesterday, but because sometimes we can tend to disregard our older pieces, but we shouldn't. We should keep them going. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I try to give. Particularly for writers, you get kind of a, a refresh uh, ideal of, of your work, hearing it again. I, I, I love the line about nightmares. I wish I had. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I would dream of nightmares. <laughs> I think the casting worked out great. I mean, I don't know if you handpicked people for this or if it was just people who volunteered, but like they ended up working out great. I think everyone yeah. was perfect for their role. Okay. Yeah, I, I kept waiting for. Okay, what's Paul doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I was waiting see what Paul was going to get up to, but I love the mystery and the suspense and the, this sort of, um, with the librarians, because obviously you think typically they're bookish and they're a little bit boring, but they've got so much going on in the background. <laughs> no, it's appalling and it's great. So, yeah, good process, definitely. Enjoyed it. And I used to be a, a cataloger. So all of Myrtle's boring talk <laughs> about cataloging is all ac accurate and catalogers feel passionate about those issues. <laughs> oh. Very good, very good. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. I hope you do something more with it. It looked like it could make a cute sitcom. Well, I what, I've actually, what I have done with it is I've taken two of the characters and um, continued the story on. Oh, so yeah? it's Courtney the yeah. shelver and Elaine the manager appear in two more short comedies. Oh. So the trilogy is called Three Weird Mornings at the Library. Oh. Maybe we'll bring oh, the other cool. two in another time. Oh yeah. Sure. Um, I, I really enjoyed this one. I, I would I would love to read those other ones. Yeah, me too. I would like to read those too, yeah. So it's already cast, right? <laughs> Yeah, and what's funny is I, I actually worked at a library and I was going to become their their next children's librarian. It was like my dream. And then, you know, life happened and I left. But it's actually still my dream to work at a library again one day. So thanks Beautiful. for that. You may have to start your own reading series and just go to whatever is your local library and uh, yeah. ask to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So our 
Next one is Barbara Fox's Girls Night Out. I think, Bar did Barbara leave? I think she had to leave. That was a hilarious play. Holy cow. Yes. I'm trying to remember. Very funny. And, Very and, funny. And y'all were great together. That oh, was yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. Mm -hmm. The chemistry was really, really, really interesting. Was I was thinking like, I, uh, how, what is this show with uh, Jane Fonda and... The last one from Netflix, um, Tumbling. That oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I know the one yeah, you're talking about. Oh, Frankie and... Um, Frankie and... and yeah. Grace and Frankie, Grace and Frankie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've had that vibe too. Like, like this kind of... Uh, it seemed like an episode of that she show. Like, that was really awesome, right? Oh, wow, that's great. I love that show. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. yeah, they were definitely opposite characters, Goretti trying to hide herself the whole time. And the other woman was just out there experiencing it. And, 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 yeah. and I love when the, the teacher who's the dancer goes, aren't you the president of the vice president? Of the <laughs> aren't you the classroom <laughs> monitor? Oh, really? Should I report you? And they were like, oh, no, we don't know you at all. We're good. Energetic. I'll give you that. A bit sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Is it Charlie? Is it John? Charlie. Charlie. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness me. Yeah. That was good. Especially for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The comic the commitment to the character was was like we did with all the dressing and even when you're standing up like, whoa, you stood up. <laughs> Hey, it was <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to do a full body thing on Zoom, but I couldn't make it work. So well, whatever you saw is about all you can get for day. Given the limitations of Zoom, you did very well. Yes. And, and I'm assuming since you were holding your underwear, the underwear <laughs> on, that you had nothing on below the waist. <laughs> well, I was pretending that I pulled it off during that. Yes, that's what I was pretending to do. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was that covered is, on the bottom, though, while I was talking. <laughs> that, is, yeah, that is commitment to the craft. So I salute you. I salute you. Now, now, how much of that did you bring to the character, and how much of that was uh, directed by Barbara? Oh, I don't think we got any direction, did we? No, I mean, it was really, when we got the script, I mean, I know Ashley and I talked about it quite a bit, but... Um, when I, when I first found out that my part was a stripper, I mean, I'm a little older, so my stripping days are over publicly anyway. Um, so, uh, when I, first, when I, first, I, would, I, I would love to see you strip. <laughs> I, bet you, first, I, th I bet you're super hot still. <laughs> well, thank I you. Can I, I can never Can I join in too? I want to see it too. The one experience I've never had is going into one, you know, in case we're, we're sharing but i've always seen i've seen actors do something similar in very different contexts and like that's tragic and everyone really focuses on it and like but you know you seemed fine with it especially i think probably because it was intended to be comedic i just mm -hmm. felt bad for everyone and i knew i was missing the joke and i was really annoyed at myself i wanted to laugh i wanted to celebrate everyone and i'm just like God damn, it could really backfire. Who else is going to be there? <laughs> well, we'll let Barbara know when, when the editing comes. Oh, Barbara's not here. Sorry. No, she's not. <laughs> you already had to leave also. I want to play well, the and, and Ashley is new to the group, correct? Yes. Yes. So oh, how are you enjoying it? Awesome. Great cool. job, Ashley. Thank you. For coming thank and you. I hope you come back. Well done. Well done. Thank you. That was fun. Well, I loved all her little twists and turns in it, yeah. you know. Just keep watching the post for next month and uh, choose your part. That's okay. good. Uh, so let's see. That was girls. So fourth, no, third, the root of all evil, Asmin. Thank you, Cass. You were brilliant. Thank you so much. And the story unfolds. So eventually, thank you, Stephen. We'll put an end to it next month. Okay.
But yeah, it was great. Yeah. I I predicted Sophia. Sophie. <laughs> I did too, actually. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. 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 I'm not going to say anything. She I want to see who it she is. Seemed, I just... She seemed to want to avoid anybody entering that room. <laughs> I have to, even though I was one of the actors in the show, I have to blurt out. I was totally invested. I like this play ever since the beginning. It was really a lot of emotion in me and I didn't want to come right out and say it, but I was really into it. The monologue at the end. I'm so glad that his dad died and he's free. I want him <laughs> to have the best life he possibly can. And I'm so glad that the actor's nodding and I don't sound as psychotic as I thought I would. <laughs> I just didn't want to say it out loud because I was embarrassed. Well, I'm um, just glad that I finally get to have my evil. champagne. <laughs> he was entirely uh, evil. We knew it was coming. Yeah. I liked all the suspense towards yeah. the end, like, you know, when they realized he was dead, I was like, I like that. It reminds me of uh, Agatha Christie experience. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I felt that that very much like I, the, the the thing that I found very interesting at the same time, it's like a big compliment for, for the cast is that your voices, I'm not, I'm not talking about the accents, I'm talking about you were having a conversation, even though we are in Zoom, and there was a moment with Estonia and, and Benjamin that I faced out. I was like, imagine the room. Imagine mm -hmm. that both like play like one shot, two shot, and I was watching a movie. And then crap, I'm, I'm so like that's that's amazing because you were yeah. like connected. I don't know where are you right now, but you were so connected in that conversation. Then with the other guys and the other people started going. So that's why I felt like I watching. I was watching a. And I got a Christie play on a theater, and it was in, that's incredible because right now we are in different mm -hmm. places with technology, and that's the wonders of communication of how connect can 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 we connect and create stories in that. So congrats, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that too. I was really able to kind of just kind of forget that these were characters, or they, I mean, sorry, forget that these were actors, and just think these are characters and they're talking and. It felt very natural and did put it really put you into that place. Yeah, I thought and, so too. And yeah. I was surprised by Monica's just that little bit of costume change was enough that when you first come in as the second character, I thought you were a completely different actress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Susan, thank you so much. Last minute stepping in, you know? And, and thank you so much. No, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. that's right. I just I, I need to switch that out. It is Susan. I am sorry. Let me make sure that I Susan. put that it's in. My first time too, and I'm so intimidated and I was nervous, and you guys are all amazing. So it's just so I love you. I, thank you so much. Oh my god, people were intimidated by us. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. arrived. So, we have yeah. arrived. That was my we too. And you've never seen me play a, a I am, well, you know. I'm really good at playing psychopaths and apparently I terrify people, but no, the rest of the time we're like not. I was trying to be the boisterous guy with the firm handshake <laughs> vocally, so it was a bit of a challenge. No, everyone's very nice here and will encourage you. Thank you. So Susan, will you be back? Yes, if you'll have me, yes. Sure. And, and where are you located? Uh, now I'm in Florida, but I'm, I, I'm, uh in Buff outside of buffalo new york oh okay and i'm not an actor at all i acted okay. in college and then i was in music was a flutist and oh, professor a job, and years so like so I knew acting I in college counts yeah, yeah it does. how did you find the how did you find the group um a friend of mine i was in an acting zoom class first in improv and then there in la it was during covid and then somehow somebody recommended it to me, and because um, cool. I love the acting class I was in. So, yeah, cool. thank you. It was it. It was it. Henry Murray Graham was it? Henry Graham Murray. No. I'm sorry. It no. was it. Henry Graham. Okay. It's just that he's involved I think so. in a lot. He's involved in a lot of virtual groups, and he actually began hosting this this group. Oh, oh no. Well, welcome and. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, my class. Thank you. You're brilliant. Thank I you. cannot wait for the YouTube. I love the twists and the turns, especially, you know, surprise marriages, surprise deaths. And at this point in the play, 
you know, right to the scene before we, the last scene, at this point, most plays, you kind of know what's going to happen. You're kind right. of on a certain path. And to have so many twists and turns at the end is fabulous and fascinating. And and it's still like, what's going to happen next? There's still more. <laughs> and so many actors so playing the same parts. <laughs> <laughs> and saving my neck. Yes. <laughs> So, so Benjamin, you're also new to the group, correct? Uh, I, I would be new to the group in the sense that my name on Zoom is Benjamin right now. Uh, I think I was here, was it a month ago? Um, I was uh, working with uh, Rex McGregor and Leslie. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and my name is uh, Stephen, although I haven't changed my name back. Maybe I should do that. Yeah. Wait, you're not British. I'm sorry? Yeah, you were having an accent, so I thought it were your real accent. Yeah, your uh, accent was really good. Very I good. Was really yeah, good. I was really impressed. You very convincing. I was. I got Thank fooled. You. Great. Oh. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Walter. I, I had really good um, teachers. Okay, cool. Great. And I, I don't know if you saw my comment, Walter, but right, right back at you. I really, really enjoyed um, uh, the the entire play you did. But I remember we'll, we'll get to it. But you were wonderful and. Your voice is also really easy, uh, easy on the ears. And yeah, you're great. Well, then we'll move, we'll, we'll move right into uh, Cat Mother then. Uh, Lily, um, did I meet you at the Producers Club? Yes. Okay. All right. So is, is this a departure from your, your regular work? Yes. Um... It's more narrative. Uh, I wrote this in lockdown okay. and I've never written before. Oh, but no you way. have done, you have done films, but they've been more experimental. Experimental, which is, you know, no characters, lots of splashy things flying around. Um, if there's a character, they're dancing or it's, there's no written word. But this this was a, a a really unique change in the works that have been presented, you know, so far. It, it still has that experiment experimental feeling to it, even though it's more of a narrative story now. So I, I'd like to hear from each of your actors how they felt about getting into those characters in the script. I'll start first. Um... Lily and I had a phone conversation and uh, she explained to me the whole story and then she may or may not tell you, but she's a great artist. So she has written a book about uh, Cat Mother and uh, I intend to buy that book. And uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic illustration of the whole story. And had oh. I not talked to her on the phone, I probably wouldn't have uh, been able to understand the whole story. She's, she's a great, uh, not only a storyteller, but also uh, and uh, an artist. Oh, wow. Interesting, wow. wow. So, so I wrote this in lockdown and self-published it, obviously, and it has pictures in it. You can see the pictures on my Facebook page if you look me up. So, we'll, so we'll be, as, we'll be posting that. Can, on I, the, the can I ask a quick question? So, yeah. is that is this connected in some way with um, the story of Jesus and his forty days in the desert, and then the various um, entity or and Satan coming to him in various forms? I'm not saying that the characters were all satanic, but I'm just saying. I would say if you wrote that in your review, I would not object. Okay, <laughs> but it's also like Alice in Wonderland, kind of. Um, yeah, you know, I like that. Of that ilk. Um, so, as the age of the woman and the fact that she's kind of suicidal all the time, you know, puts a different spin on the whole thing. Did, right. did the, do the various creatures have any? Uh, are they any kind of a symbol to you as to what they meant beyond um, the characters presented? Well, the, um, you know, I've, there is a place where these rocks look like animals and things. So I kind of, you know, imagined that on there myself. And um, 
people love cats. You know, the, the puma is like a force, a, a force of nature. Do you want to say anything, Walter, about? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, when we talk about the, the story first we did, the uh, scene with the puma, and when we talk about with Amanda, was that the Amanda Puss was more like the conscience, the rational part of the brain is saying like, we need to think about it, don't don't hesitate. We need to process what we're feeling about suicide. While the puma was emotion, was the impulse of jump, do it. <laughs> Shoot yourself and like kill it. So that's why uh, the puma is always repetitive and very aggressive. It's trying to represent all the all the darkness that can can come with anxiety and and pushing it and pushing it and pushing it, trying to push into the edge. While the Amanda Puss is like kind of the angel on the other side of the shoulder, trying to say like reflect on it, reflect on it. So when we talk about that with Lily, she was very. <clears throat> very on board with the idea and like trying to mix it's like i don't know dali buñuel and alice in wonderland was mixed it up with jesus the 40 days in the desert and that's what we got so i, I thought it was very surrealist experience and i'm very happy to be part of it. so was she okay so i know that she was i thought she was lost in the desert and she was dying because there was no water and st all that was she also contemplating killing herself yes yes Okay, all right. That's the wonderland when she is right now. The desert is not like a real, the real desert is more like a Her psyche metaphor. Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. If, okay. everything within their heart. So it's like instead of Alice in Wonderland, it's Cadmore in Wonderland, and Wonderland is about right, not right. growing she's up. She's, having a about... yeah. but she's lost yeah. in the desert, she's lost she... in her own mind and world, yeah. not knowing yeah. what it is she wants to do. Now, can, did, did can she be... lose? Does her character lose a child? Does her character lose the child? She knows. I'm, I'm just referencing the parts at the end where they were saying something about mother. Uh, Walter's character. Uh, well, that that line is kind of like uh, kind of like a joke in a way, like. Um, the Amanda Puss and the Puma are are goading her to kind of like get it together and get out of herself. Yeah. Um, it, 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 to me, it was, it was like they were, especially Walter's character was trying to freak her out. Yeah. 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 Not Walter. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, not me, but the poor, yeah. For me, I yeah. Just, yeah, um, I love um, the, oh, Leslie, do you want to say anything? I'm, I'm honored to, be a uh, part of this actually and have the opportunity to play this part um i think it says a lot about things that people wrestle with in general like especially grief and yeah. um and their own sense of self and their own sense of especially if they're grieving a loss of someone else or or a life that they thought that maybe they would have and they don't um and then wondering you know should they follow along should they in their life um yeah. you know questioning and then the the hallucinations i think just like you were saying the different parts of the mind and the conscience who the consciousness and the conscience you know and we're wrestling with all of that at once you know and then and then the circumstances are you know extraordinary being lost in the desert um trying to find the inhaler you know for literally like to breathe you know yeah. so um and then being lost from and separated from others. And and I think we wrestle with that. I mean, what an extraordinary time to do this piece because that's what's going on in a way during lockdown, during the pandemic, that we're all struggling with our sense of self and our sense of isolation. So, you know, I think this is a commentary on all of that. One thing I would like to add is about the, the camel is that for us, was that come out was that the guardian angel trying to at least try to save her for a little more, for some minutes, try to drink her the water to stay alive. So that's why at the end it, it's done. It's, he got, well, it got his win or he or she win. So that's why, that's why it disappears. Like my job is done. You're right now safe. Now it needs to go to your next adventure that is with the Puma. And the, mm -hmm. So it was, we would really try to make her like a very fondly only relationship like a very 
could be a funny, quirky person, but with a big heart that make people like be cultivated with with the with the relationship. So, <coughs> it was really fun. It was and, really fun. Like that. And the Amanda Puss appears throughout the the whole piece, like in different scenes. Oh, okay. Well, I think, I think it prepared us well for uh, fear and loathing. I'm sorry. What was that, Stephen? I said I think it prepared us well for fear and loathing. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, so just just one thing. I just really very happy to be here. This is my first time here, and you did a good job. Uh, well, thank you. Wait, and and everybody said that the state that I'm coming from. Well, I'm not from a state. I'm from another country. I'm from Peru in South America. So oh. I'm very happy to to be here. So <laughs> I think you are our first guest from Peru. Yeah, yeah, from, yeah, from, yeah. So so from here, from Machu Picchu to Wall. Hola. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're in Peru right now. Yeah, in Peru. I'm living oh, in Peru. Oh, that's wonderful. Peru. Okay. Okay. So Wait, the, are, the, are you the, in Machu Picchu? No, no, Machu Picchu is in Cusco, but I know everybody knows about Machu Picchu. It's like, hi. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the wonders of technology, I'm really happy to be part of this. Yeah. So just watch the watch the group and the page, and when writers start posting that they need actors. Grab, grab a part. Okay. So fear and loathing. It was the one that brought Walter in. Yeah. Cool. I on just to wanted you. to say very quickly, Amanda's makeup. I loved it when you came on screen. I loved it. <laughs> I watched it. It worked so well. Gosh. It's a waterproof eyeliner. I only had like the one page or something to go change, and I got one too close to the other, but I said, you know, it's imaginary, so <laughs> whatever. Brilliant. And brilliant makeup, yeah. And it yeah. worked well towards the end. Yes. It's kind of creeping me out a little bit. I think, oh my nice, God. Nice commitment to the part. Of course. Absolutely. My name is Amanda Puss, so how could I not? You know? <laughs> mm -hmm. And she brought the desert with her. Mm -hmm. I did. Great work, Lily. Okay. So, Mary. Yes. That was... Very interesting, particularly the 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 lapping over of the uh, conversation. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it ha that's how they do it in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to see if we could do that here, and I think it worked really well. Oh, it did. Yeah, because it's supposed to be like he's well. There's the combination of there's the narration where he's sort of telling us what's going on, but it's also him kind of sort of a combination of the narrator narrating about the past, but also what's going through the character's head at the time. And um, sometimes as these things are going through the character's head, he, because he's so high, he starts accidentally saying some of the crazy things that are in his head. And then he goes, oh no, did I just say that out loud? You know, did I just say aloud that we're going to have to, you know, kill this boy and bury him in the desert? Quite expressive and scary. Mary. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Let me put it this way, Mary. This is a compliment. You gave me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much like, I, I was thinking like this movie, like, oh my God, oh, this character, oh my God. And I've seen the film, so I felt a very similar. Oh, you saw the film? Way. Yeah, I watched the film. So when yeah. I watched it, I had a very similar experience. So yeah. that, that's what I'm telling you. It's like, I felt that same amount of anxiety, like, Oh my God! Oh, it is in a good way. Like so, so oh, wow. it was, it was very, very, very emotional. Very good. Yeah. I was okay. Bye, Zev. Um, I was, I it was hard. I was trying very hard to be true to the character and the style of the movie, but not a hundred percent like imitate what Johnny Depp did in playing yeah, the character. Yeah. I didn't want to just copy him, you know. So um, I was kind of treading a line there, you know. You were um, successful, and, I think, for sure. Okay, good. Thank you. And I was. I think you came along at just the right time to grab this part. Well, to me, it seems like a lot of the movie is very, you know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and the limitations of Zoom, like you have to stop one person, stop, and then another person start, and yeah. it kind of like it's it, disjointed. It's disjointed a little bit, but I thought it was fun. 
We have a good time. But that's and you know, but but since they're so disjointed, it kind of works. They don't yeah. make sense. And so sometimes this is one of those atmospheres where if there's a stumble or a talk over or not talking soon enough. And the it, it, it doesn't ruin it because they're it doesn't it doesn't have to be as tight because these they are so out of control. Yeah. yeah. And That's Karen, great. Your, your expressions were 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 just right on. Uh, I I could fear your fear. Uh, are you you're talking to um to Carol? Yeah. 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 Are you there, Carol? Yeah. Yeah. I well, I'm not sure. I thought I saw Carol. No, I don't. Yeah, but sure. Carol, if Carol, if you're out there, yeah. Oh, there she is. Yeah. She changed her head. Her her. her and she, and she's um yeah she did a great teenager yes mm -hmm. for sure yeah it's such a so fun, so much fun watching her i know a donation can help a really long way when I what I, I think that was victor's background oh uh, so, yeah what? and i mean and she she did such a good job of you know shrinking back when she needed to shrink back she did a good job of 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 giving the impression of leaving the car. Um, Does she leave so the car it was, when it's moving? What? Does she leave the car when it's moving or have they parked? Um, no, because we're stopped. We're stopped over on the side because he was having the heart attack. <laughs> um, so he he did stop the car at that point, and then we were just sitting there, and then he starts telling her this scary story, and then she just says, That's enough. She gets up and she runs. Yeah. So, um, it's an albino. I mean, I don't think the actor's albino, but the way they made him up, I think he's supposed to be albino in the movie. And I think that's actually why Gonzo says, Did you see his eyes? Oh, because albino's eyes are different, but I didn't think that mattered so much. Just whatever, he's just like I said, it doesn't have to make sense, you know. I, I, I thought um, he was talking but, about the fear in, in, the, in his eyes. Yeah, and I think that was part of it, but I think it was also, and that's also one reason he said, oh my God, what a freak. So this kid was, this kid was a freak for being albino and not wanting to smoke weed and not wanting ether, but they're not, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of, that's the irony. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was very happy with it and very happy with all of you. And thank you so much for doing such a great job of narrating. Um, that was it, that was just really good um and even though she, i wasn't sure we could pull this off with the camera off and she suggested having the camera off and i think it worked really well we were able to do the overlapping we were able to talk at the same time when we needed to talk at the same time it worked really well yeah it gave it more definition yeah, yeah it was very good it was yeah. great for because it helped the sense of urgency and that mm -hmm. scene needed a lot of urgency so i was very hooked it was like the the beat was on time was go 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 one two one two so that was really impressive to be assumed it's not about you it's about that you know the format technology sometimes it doesn't it works against us but i think it was really really great strategy yeah we were able to make it work yeah awesome. so i was very happy so delighted you guys okay. I have thank you very enjoyable I loved all the variety we had tonight of the different yeah. topics. Yes. It was really quite it was like a festival, like a film festival. Yeah, kind of it was great. Yeah. So yeah. many things. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Uh, bye, Courtney. Awesome. Bye, Sarah. Bye. I, think I have to take off too, so I'm going to say bye bye. Thank bye. you so much, everybody. Bye. This is a great, bye. so many great scenes and plays and such Very great performances. Good, yeah. It was really fun. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be doing it again in March. Yep. Yes. We're it's, marching forward. The, 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 uh, the rules are yeah, like once per month, right? Yes. March 26. Okay. I think the last Sunday of the month, I think, right? Is what it is. Yeah, last yeah, Sunday of the month. So yes. everybody here are, are actors and writers and directors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I don't no. act. I, act I, very so. I just write. So you just write. Oh, awesome. What was your question, Walter? Really well. I'm sorry? <laughs> what was your question? And I was asking like everybody in the group was like writers, directors, actors, or sometimes or some people are like because of the fun of it, you know.
and, and most of the writers end up directing their own pieces. Wonderful. Yeah. So Walter, do you do do you do any writing? I re really I'm a I'm a talent manager. I'm a manager Ooh. for actors uh, yeah. in South America, and I'm also wow. a, a screenplay writer. I, I write films, and I'm a theater director. So okay. I'm not an actor. Oh. So, uh -huh. Well, but, if if you ever want to post any writing, I was thinking it, of that. Even if it's like like Tasman has brought in a piece each month. Yeah. The thing is, it's in Spanish. I will need to translate, but with technology, you know, with Google Translate, I can do a little bit. I can send we it to... We will never be the Spanish. Spanish. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Hola, amigo. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah no, I, I will try my best. I will try my best. Okay. That'd be awesome, yeah. I, yeah, it's just as long as it's 10 minutes or less and the suggested uh, cast is probably five or under. If uh, Just because if you try to get too many... I understand. Holes are, you know, it, it may be hard to fill all the parts. Mm -hmm. I understand. Great. Awesome. I will do that for my writing too. I'm very excited. I gotta excited. go. Bye. Thank Good you. seeing you. Lovely to see you all. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for yeah, thank you for organizing. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.